it's a pleasure to be there, to see so many bright heads. Uh, it's actually the first time I've been to Istanbul and I fell in love with this city. I hope that it's going to be mutual. And uh, my name is Mercedes Sergei. I'm a publishing lead from Azure Games, as well as I'm a director of Azure Games Belarus department. And I'm going to tell you about Tricky KPI. Uh, I will provide you with some showcases, the way we work with games, uh, the way we test, and uh, maybe, maybe it will be useful for you to ask good questions to you, to your partners, if you do uh, hyper casual games and work as publisher. So, let's try it. Yeah, what is Azure Games? Azure Games is an international developer and publisher, a mid-core and hyper casual. Uh, right there you can see top 3, but uh, at our board top 10, no worries, I will explain you why. But yeah, now we're top 3 in mobile publisher due to downloads. Uh, we have more about uh, more than 100 launched games, uh, including mid-core titles, casual titles, hyper-casual titles, and we finally reached this crazy milestone in 2 billion downloads worldwide, both iOS and Android. And by the way, you, we publish games not only uh, on those uh, platforms, but I will tell you about it a little bit later. So, yeah, we are going fast, and uh, for the last six months, uh, we all we have been reaching this position top three, from top three to top seven, uh, due to downloads worldwide. And uh, in September, as you see, yeah, a good time, a good time, a good place to be there. Uh, still uh, some downloads to hit Voodoo, but actually sometimes we manage to do it in April. In April, yeah, it may be May. Uh, <laughs> that was that was a very important milestone for us. As well as you can see, say games there, guys from uh, my homeland. Farewell to them. So, but yeah, in September we are the third due to downloads. Uh, we started, we want to go from uh, mid-core titles about uh, three years ago. What about hyper-casual games? It's about uh, two years ago and uh, it was started with Stackball game. You probably know about that game. Uh, it's still profitable, we still continue buying traffic for it. It still get about 7 million downloads per month, but in total you see it's almost 400 million downloads for a hyper casual game. So, if you think that hyper casual is not serious and not sustainable, uh, and you're afraid uh, of your future, I know that it's a pain of uh, every developer. They always ask me for how long, how long I will bring this money. Uh, just remember about such titles, about fundamental titles. You have always, you always have a chance to make something crazy, a stack ball, and uh, continue for almost three years, two and a half actually. Uh, generating good profit. Uh, but what about uh, Tricky KPI? What about Tricky KPI? Uh, I want to start with Warm Zone game. It is almost 400 million uh, downloads. Uh, what is what is funny that uh, poor people know about it? I will explain why. Uh, this is our game Warm Zone. Uh, it was the first title. We actually asked a question about Tricky KPI and uh, how the industry works. Uh, several publishers refused this game because it had CPI more than one dollar in the United States iOS. Several publishers. Uh, but uh, we were lucky to test uh, two years ago both United States and worldwide campaigns and we found unbelievably low CPI at worldwide. It was about two cents, two, three cents for tier three countries. Uh, you know, you always have this balanced proportion when you have very high CPI in the United States, it's always high worldwide. But sometimes, sometimes extremely rare, and you can find such cases when the uh, United States is very uh, expensive. But what about worldwide? It's, it is not. And what about Warm Zone game? I don't know. No, no video. Okay, but play this game, it's fantastic. What, one more thing about it. It is landscape, not portrait, and it has uh, almost 400 million downloads, mostly 200 million from Indonesia, and only 4 million from United States. It is 
Several publishers refused this game. This game has already made about $12 million of profit. So ask your publisher well, what KPI do you have and why? And uh, what kind of games you want to develop and why? Uh, it's a very important thing. And since that we started uh, making more and more tests worldwide and uh, uh, all, all the geo and analyzing the data we see, how players play in different countries, what LTV we can get from there, and uh, we, start, we started doing it more uh, with business approach. Uh, and more deep than just test uh, on iOS United States uh, and that's it. So now still the game is developing, we iterate it, uh, it has, right now it has about 2-3 dollars CPI at that's networks and still uh, we have a chance to return money back uh, and not in apps like in any other hyper casual game, it's still hyper casual. Uh, what about in apps? As I told you, uh, it's about 12 million profit already. And what about in apps? Half of million, half of million. So it's uh, not uh, not a lot for hyper casual games. It's not hyper casual. It's only it is fully hyper. It's not a hybrid. Not hybrid, but hyper. What about benchmarks we have? Of course, you have seen many, many times all those benchmarks. Uh, but that what we have when we launch games. Uh, we have such called top games, uh, maybe this last year, because of course uh, one year ago or two years ago uh, it would be much much more easier to receive CPI United States lower, but still we publish uh, games with these metrics. You have seen those metrics many many times. What is interesting is that uh, we test both uh, CPI and retention rate to collect a lot of data, uh, to analyze not only marketability of game but uh, scalability of core gameplay and uh, it's, it's extremely important because it is about your approach, ideation approach, development approach because if you start making games uh, with strong core loop gameplay uh, you don't need a lot of levels, uh, you don't need uh, anything to receive a good retention rate, for example uh, even 10 levels uh, with 4 good strong core loop gameplay is enough to receive good retention rate. So that's why, uh, that, that's why we test both. Uh, we are not afraid of high CPI and uh, as you have seen uh, in the case with Worm Zone, $1 CPI uh, was okay to scale it up to 400 million downloads. So it's about uh, what we see. Uh, that's my favorite uh, slide, become friends first, then partners. Uh, how it all began as well, you know, uh, there is a rotation, a natural rotation in this business between publishers and developers. Uh, developer is working with a publisher for a long time, they test, test, make more and more, and finally they understand that they can do anything and they think that the problem is in their partner. Uh, publisher sometimes thinks that it's about developer, developer thinks it is about publisher, and rotation happens, uh, developer changes the publisher, and that's it. But uh, sometimes we uh, become good friends with studios, and we want to give them possibility uh, to earn and uh, to boost, to boost their business, because anyway, Developer, every developer would need, uh, need this opportunity to grow, to continue building business and to start receiving uh, royalty, not just you know, risks coverage, pay to prototypes or some um, uh, advanced payments, but uh, it, is about, uh, it is about feeling of this success. Of course, there are a lot of studios who, uh, who, feels, you know, who feel good uh, just receiving the pay to prototype and so on. But anyway, anyway, uh, our business model uh, was started in, within these terms of flexible KPI. Uh, the main principle was, yeah, become friends. We want to help our friends to, to continue this journey with us, not to suffer from this rotation. Yeah. One, one more case I want to share. Uh, it is ChainCube. What about Warm Zone? 
uh, I have explained, chain Cupid is a bright, bright case uh, when, once again, several publishers refused this game because CPI was $1, uh, retention rate was, okay, I'll show later, and we'll tell you later about metrics. Now it has only 27 million of downloads, but it has 25 uh, millions of revenue, of ads revenue, and uh, once again, it's not hybrid casual game. Uh, it's about uh, not hybrid, but hyper casual. It's mostly about ads networks, and once again, 27 million of downloads, a little bit more, and 25 millions of revenue. Uh, that's the game. How to stop the video? There should be a video of this game, but okay. You just should push, push the blocks and merge them within the rules of 2048. Uh, the CPI was extremely high, but uh, we started. Uh, why we decided to iterate? Uh, we found that not bad retention rate, not bad play time, but uh, we saw that there are obvious problems uh, with charm rates, with physics, with how game feel, how how game feels, how it looks like, and uh, we took this risk and started iteration process. It was really fun. So why? Why we started? Because we found this gameplay meditative. Uh, it is variable and good action response field. Actually, this uh, thing about action response it is the, the only thing you should worry about when you develop games. What I mean? Every action you should always, when you uh, create an idea and you start prototyping, uh, the only thing important action response. Action response, what user does and what uh, he gets. And uh, you always, you have been always hearing this phrase deep gameplay, deep core loop gameplay. Uh, but I have never heard any definition. What is deep core gameplay? It's about this action response. It is how many options you have uh, within action and what kind of response you receive. It is about, yeah, such a word, variable. Variable, variable gameplay. So, it took us six months and uh, about 50 updates to we, we were crazy. We were crazy about games and uh, some partners, it's true, some partners suffer from it. Uh, they want to start something new and of course they have this right to start something new. Uh, sometimes we can make uh, something real cool like Warm Zone or Chaincube, sometimes no, but in this case, yeah, it was six months of development, uh, 50 plus iterations and uh, what we were working on. It was game feel itself, the weight, the physics of these cubes. Uh, we were experimenting with shapes, uh, with sounds, with the, the mass itself, uh, the balance, uh, everything, monetization, ratings, because uh, we do care about ratings, uh, and you should also do because it's about your future organics. Of course, when you are in, in the top charts, uh, you will receive some organics, but uh, it is a great misconception, I believe, that organics came only from top charts. No, uh, not at all. I will tell you a little bit later about some more cases. Uh, why not only from top charts? So do, do take care about ratings, it is important. And after that, what we made uh, from day one, almost 40, we made the day one 60 percentage retention. Play time 30 minutes for day one, and the play time for day 30, uh, 50 minutes. And uh, we started scaling this game with one dollar CPI. Now it is about four dollars CPI on ads networks, and it is still hyper casual. It's not hybrid at all. Uh, we do not have a big volume of in apps revenue. Uh, we have about 15 interstitials per day for user. I mean, uh, even taking into account day 30, we have about six rewarded videos per day. 
and uh, it is hyper casual simple mechanics with good action response you can shoot to any place at the screen you can choose where to shoot every time there will be a little effect of random effect because you don't know how these cubes uh, will uh, jump when they merge unfortunately as you saw technically maybe some technical troubles I can't show you video of gameplay but yeah when they merge they jump and uh, there is a little random effect hyper casual users by the way don't like random effect they like uh, control everything they like receive understandable response but still uh, we managed we managed to do it and to launch the game the game still feels comfortable uh, as I told you, uh, about 25 million of revenue uh, and 27 million of downloads, uh, crazy, crazy sums. And uh, we're still working on the game. And we even made instant game for Facebook. Uh, it doesn't perform well uh, in terms of money, but still uh, we are experimenting and continue development of this game. One more case, one more interesting case uh, about this uh, flexible approach. It was with Hitmaster game. Uh, it is a funny story because from the very beginning we agreed with the partner that we will make very deep cool game. Not hybrid casual as it was popular at November, at October, but, but I, will I will tell you a little bit later about my attitude to these hybrid casual games. But uh, we were making this prototype for three months hyper casual prototype was made for three months and we didn't care about CPI we just understood that we want to make this game our partner wanted to make clone of Archer game by Voodoo just the same uh, we insist on making something uh, different uh, with the same input but uh, with another set not the same setting and we didn't care about CPI at all. We just uh, digging into retention, into fill. We made several play tests internal, not at ads networks, not at Facebook, just internal, just within how we feel this game and how we feel this response. We iterated a lot uh, the physics, how the knife is flying. Yeah, the game about uh, flying knives. Maybe once again. No videos today. Okay, okay, no videos today. Uh, you should throw the knife, you tap to place where it should be, uh, where you want to hit. And uh, we experimented with physics, with the weight of the knife, and with ragdoll effects, uh, with enemies, and stuff like that. Once again, reasons for iterating. Everything is the same. Meditative, reliable gameplay. Yeah, I forgot about metrics then. Yeah. We got uh, 80 cents uh, CPI in the United States at IOS and retention rate you can see. Not bad retention rate because it was only 7 levels, 7 unique levels. And one more funny thing about this game, one more, I usually show my follower games and he usually look at these games, oh, that's shitty, and he don't play at all. But what about this game? I showed him this game, he didn't respond to me, and uh, in 2 days, he sent me a screenshot at level 300 and he wrote me, Sergey, I think that you guys lack of levels. I told him, follow, there are seven levels. And he was at 300. That's what I call deep core loop gameplay. You don't need to make a lot of content uh, to make some crazy stuff about progression and so on. Uh, if you have good action, response. Once again, this game is about action response. Uh, you have understandable action, you should uh, throw the knife and uh, you got various uh, response because you can interact with uh, objects on the level, uh, you can get a headshot to one shot your enemy when you hit any part of body, uh, the ragdoll effect uh, appear, appears and it's really funny, it's about the uh, deep game. And once again, it was flexible KPI. I believe that uh, there were no publishers at November who took this game with CPI 80 cents. 
but still we managed to increase both uh, day one and day seven and now the game has more than 80 million downloads and we still continue. It was long return of investment rate, yeah. It is not a big topic to talk, but uh, uh, if you want to make... Okay, I will tell you a little bit later about it. But in short, if you want to make a uh, commercial launch with high CPI, of course, uh, you have to do a great job in terms of longer retention rate. A little bit later I will tell you how to do it and how we do it, but still keep it in mind. Oh, video! Okay, nice. This is our one of our creatives. Interaction with objects. Uh, pretty fine game. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, it must have been. One more funny case. Now uh, with flexible KPI, but not at the beginning of the iteration, but not at the beginning. Uh, but finally when we launch the game, it is our game state.io It is a, a real-time strategy game uh, Of course, we were inspired by several games of our competitors And uh, it's very cool mechanics uh, Of course with high CPI, but uh, with good potential in terms of retention rate But uh, it was about 25 CPI at the beginning uh, although, you see, it's very laconic, it's an uh, abstract setting, uh, look at the video. It wasn't about flexible KPI, yeah? it was about 20 cents CPI and uh, it was about 40 retention rate. But, what is interesting, once we started iterating the game and once we started uh, scaling it a little bit at Ads Networks, we grew our CPI to two dollars, the United States IOS. But we managed to increase metrics once again, even day 36 percent. Uh, we have several cool mid-core titles, uh, real-time. Uh, we have uh, first-person shooters, and even mid-core titles usually don't have such metrics like hyper-casual game does. I mean playtime. I mean day 30. Of course, it is a matter of uh, how important those users in mid-core titles, those six percentages, uh, they will uh, buy some boosters, they will buy some subscriptions and so on. But anyway, uh, CPI is crazy and still the game feels good and uh, you can see it uh, in, in the top uh, at Android. Not know about uh, iOS, but what about Google Play? Yeah. It is in top uh, United States for a very long time. Yeah, it's all about appreciative approach. Uh, I want to talk. We ever since started in other games with uh, mid-core titles, uh, it is absolutely different kind of making games. Uh, it is absolutely kind of make, uh, polishing games and marketing as well. Uh, Actually, this uh, mid-core approach in marketing allows us to work with flexible KPI because we have strong prediction system, strong prediction LTV system, and we do not afraid to scale games in very long return of investment rate because how it works usually? Uh, usually publishers have uh, at least used to have, at least used to have, maybe. Now I see that more and more publishers starting uh, launching such old flexible KPI games, but how it works in general, uh, publisher buy traffic and they analyze the percentage of return of investment rates and when this day uh, come. For example, uh, day 10, return of investment 110%. Uh, and you have, uh, you know the number of costs you spent, you have this return of investment rate, you just calculate them and you receive profit. Mostly publishers work within, in hyper-casual within 30 days. 20, 30 and that's it. And uh, what about uh, uh, all the other days? Uh, I haven't heard about it widespread. We work with 180, half of the year sometimes, at hyper-casual. Half of the year we can scale the game and uh, of course sometimes it is pain for our partners 
uh, but we try to somehow balance this thing with paying minimal guarantee, some advanced payments. Uh, but finally, we receive more profit, and finally, uh, we have opportunity to optimize our our marketing because when you have a lot of traffic, uh, when you have a lot of traffic, we will buy it with positive uh, return of investments rate, but not very high. Uh, you have space to optimize in case you know there are some competitors in the market, and they also buy traffic for some similar games and stuff like that. So it was all began with our Midcore. We with Midcore, we tried not to uh, not to combine because Midcore is about more deep polishing. Of course, Hypercasual doesn't need every time uh, very deep polishing. It's about uh, it's about very low entry threshold. I mean, we do games for. Uh, for the widest audience we can imagine. I believe maybe 2 billion people, maybe more, but uh, uh, it, is, it is unbelievably, unbelievably big. And uh, what about Midcore? Uh, you can think and you can uh, make something you believe user needs. Because uh, you understand the genre, you understand the specific of genre, the rules of the genre. What about hyper casual? Show me, please, any person who knows uh, what two billion people uh, need. Maybe Effa, <laughs> but but no one else. <laughs> so no one knows what two billion people need. You know, we have only some basic principles. Uh, what you shouldn't do, but not what you should do. Because come on, two billion people. Uh, it's almost impossible. This is the widest target audience uh, you can imagine. The future of the industry, uh, I see that uh, hypercasual is stable. Hypercasual feels good. Uh, I've been hearing for the last two years that hypercasual is dying, that uh, hybrid casual will come, will prevail in-apps purchases, come on guys, let's do in-apps games. But no, once again, what we do here, it is low entry threshold game. It works within market laws. There is a demand in these kind of games, in low entry threshold games. So what about gender itself, don't worry. It will be forever with us. But I notice that there is a competition a uh, great competition between products, not even between developers, between publishers, no, between products, because, you know, uh, the competition is always about, uh, in our market, about the users, not about developers, uh, about the users, about the traffic. Because still, there are a lot of, I call them old but gold titles, like Stackball, and every publisher has such a case, uh, with the game or several games uh, scaled for two years or even more. There are still old but gold titles. Once again, State Ball gaining seven, from 7 to 10 million downloads per month. Still, it's a very simple game. And a lot of new cool titles are coming and they will be coming more and more. So we see that there is a uh, such called drop of retention rate long-term retention rate in our games. It's a funny thing because, you know, we earn from showing ads of other games. That's how we earn. But when we show the ads in our games, we let our competitors attract these users. Uh, that's how this market works. And uh, so, you know, it's uh, turn out, uh, once again, rotation. But but it is not a bubble. It's not a bubble. Uh, there is a widespread opinion that it is a bubble that will burst. Uh, not because we have, we have demand. We have users who play these games and who need these games. So, I believe that anyway, such kind of games with so-called flexible CPI, with high CPI, with uh, high retention rate as well, uh, they will prevail. It, it still will be, still it's going to be hyper casual. 
uh, maybe because the in, because mobile grows itself, maybe in-app purchases uh, somehow will be scaled up, but not twice within next five years, I believe. So uh, anyway, we should think about uh, deep fundamental mechanics that attract users for a very long time. And uh, by the way, what about feature industry and this slide? Uh, these characters are from access.io game. It is maybe the oldest game of other games, uh, hybrid casual, uh, with in-apps and with another kind of business model. And we managed to, uh, to port this game on PlayStation, Xbox and Nintendo Switch. In terms of business, it wasn't something uh, unbelievable good. Uh, but, uh, who knows, uh, maybe, maybe with the appearance of Steam Deck, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Alisha is looking at me. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But still, I believe that... Um, I believe that these addictive, addictive, cool, hyper-casual titles, anyway, will find their users because everything is becoming more faster. Uh, I, I really believe in Nintendo Switch and in Steam Deck, uh, and I believe that uh, such kind of products with addictive deep gameplay, uh, they will feel well, very well at these platforms. And um, finally, how to make these free to keep it profitable, just to sum up what we have discussed here. Uh, there is, you should have transparent relations with your partner, with your publisher. You should understand why do we have this KPI. Uh, you should ask for, you know, for return of investment uh, rate uh, strategy, maybe some deeper knowledge in marketing, and uh, of course you should start from ideation process and development process. No need to make prototypes, you have to make games and uh, you have to make variable, addictive, fundamental mechanics. Uh, of course, of course, still, you, still there are a lot of cool runners, reskins and uh, so on, it's about business, yeah. But if you want to make big cool things uh, for a long, long run, if it's something you believe you can compete in. Let's try it. Let's try and make it deeper, make it better. Don't try, uh, don't afraid of polishing the game. Speak with your partners, with your investors. Uh, tell them that, guys, uh, we know how to make better, but we need time. We need one or two more weeks to make this prototype better. Uh, because once again, once again, marketability is almost unpredictable, unpredictable stuff. But what about Retention rate, what about charm rate, what about uh, difficulty, the first flow of mechanics and so on. It is something we can at least try uh, to work with. So, and of course, overseen effect. Overseen effect, I mean, you have to play a lot, you have to see what's going on in the market, uh, what games in the top, and not only what games in the top, but uh, games with uh, a lot of downloads, games, uh, gaming downloads for a long time. So, how to make to keep that profitable? Uh, try to build transparent relations with your publisher, with your partner, with your team, and uh, ask, ask yourself why you have the KPI you have right now, and what you can do to finally to publish a game. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. If you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to answer. Any questions? But not tricky questions, please. Yeah, man. Awesome stuff. Um, nice. Good question. I uh, saw so that in chain queues you had a uh, 130% ROS. Yeah. Uh, it's which day? Like day 30 ROS or, or, or? As I told you, as I told you, uh, we work with uh, uh, day 180. 
Wow, cool. Yeah. Another question then. Um, and also you mentioned like 20, 25 million Romanian. Yeah. Um, can you share the net profit? Actually, I can't because we agreed with a partner. What about Warm Zone? I told transparently it is about uh, 12 million dollars of profit. What about ChainCube? Uh, I'm afraid I can't because of uh, because we respect our partner and uh, we agreed not to share this information. But uh, it's profitable. It's a great game. Uh, as I said, with four, right now it is about from two to four dollars at Ads Networks CPI. It uh, depends on uh, media source, depends on uh, ads network, depends on creating. Once again, what about uh, mid-core approach? Uh, we do not afraid to play with misleading videos because we see return of investment. So we can receive very high CPI or very low CPI, uh, but still we can receive good LTV from these videos and good retention rate because, yeah, uh, video uh, we use affect our retention rate. If it's going to be misleading video, sometimes misleading video with very low CPI gives you very low retention rate and it doesn't work. But mainly uh, in such games like ChainCube, uh, it can work. And finally, um, you guys have crazy amount of installs, right? And yeah. How what would you say the, the percentage of players from tier 3 countries or maybe first of the world? In general or for the games uh, I shared? For the games you shared, yeah. What about Warm Zone? 400 million downloads and uh, as I told you about half, 200 million downloads was from Indonesia. And uh, we had a day when about five percentage of people from Indonesia play this game every day, and uh, tier one for for Warm Zone tier one is about maybe ten percent, ten percent. What about Chain Cube? Uh, maybe fifty fifty. Uh, we managed to balance it somehow. But uh, the more important is not what exact every game exactly every game has proportion. But uh, the main question is uh, how your partner and how you test the game because uh, different type of games once again have different proportion in CPI. I mean United States worldwide. Sometimes worldwide can be low, for example two cents, but when you see uh, geo you will notice that it's only about tier three countries. Sometimes it can be more about tier two countries and this worldwide CPI a little bit higher, but it's okay. So it's more about uh, how you work with the data you receive. But yeah, what about these games? Uh, once again, they were rejected by publishers because of high CPI in the United States. But it's not a trouble, as you see, finally. That's it. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? All right, then. Sergey, thanks so much.